like me, you have probably heard for many years that having an ego is a bad thing. It's kind of confusing when you look at the research, when you look at the history, even where this term comes from, it is greatly misrepresented. So what I want to do right now is make a video that teaches you as a Christian, a follower of Christ, why having an ego is important. So keep watching and you're going to learn right now. Hi, my name is Sean Summercamp and this is Motivation Ear Christian Coaching. I post two videos a week, so please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can be reminded when I do. Please also consider becoming a member at motivationear.com. Your membership really supports this channel. Thank you. Just go ahead if you want, pause this video and do a search, a word etymology search on ego, and you'll find that they don't go back very far to explain where ego comes from. It goes back not to 1726, which is, I think, what you're going to get. I forget kind of now. <laughs> it just wasn't that long. It wasn't that far back in the history. But where the word ego comes from is a biblical source, and it's profound. And I'm not going to tell you about all of that right now, although I have found it incredibly interesting and fascinating. And it points to the two most important words in the Bible. But I can't get into that right now. If you want to watch more about that and hear about it, go to my membership page and become a member of motivationear.com. And then you can do a search for righteous ambition or selfish ego, or just type in the word ego and you'll find that video. Annual fee is only $35 a year. It's worth it. There are a uh, hundred hours of content there, but that video is there as well. It's a 90 minute video. But let me jump to really what the modern definition of ego actually really truly is. And it comes from the research of Sigmund Freud, whose research on the subconscious still stands strong today. Yep, there's a lot of stuff that's been debunked that he has studied and researched and shared and written about, but a lot of stuff that hasn't. And it's become kind of so second in nature in the world of psychology. We don't ever think, oh, that was Freud who first discovered that. But ego is the center the governor between our id and our superego. The id is that part of us that is inhibited. If we just gave full reign to our id, we would, without inhibition, do anything that we wanted to do. Aggressively, um, sensually, provocatively, monetarily, with greed, all of that horrible, unregulated stuff that's kind of down deep in us that tempts us from time to time. That's the id, the primal self. Well, on the other end of the spectrum is the super ego. That's the ultra sensitive side, we'll say. The side of us that says, no, no, don't do anything like that. Stay as far away from that as possible. We can call it the ultra self-righteous side. Well, we don't want to have the id prevalent in our life or the super ego. That is where the ego comes in. Now, again, go watch my video on my membership channel to understand what the word even means. But principally, it really does navigate the subconscious self in the modern, or excuse me, I should say, in the relevant, present, conscious state of mind. It is where we make choices to deny the id and deny the superego, to live and exist in a healthy, balanced way. That was really a lot of what Freud's research and study was about helping people have a healthy ego. Ego by itself is not bad. Ego just is. It's you and me. It's what we are. It's what we do. But people are said or use the word ego in a bad way because people are said to have a, um, a super big ego, a big ego, a bad ego, whatever. Well, even someone that is giving into their super ego side that ultra-sensitive, self-righteous side can have a big ego as well. Really, I think the better way to say it is, if our ego isn't well-trained and balanced, and it's for, for Christians, you know, righteously fed, we don't govern the id and the superego. And we don't want that. 
The passage that I think really describes this beautifully well is found in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, 15 through 18. Uh, maybe it's 16 through 18, but let me just read it for you. Do not be overrighteous, neither be overwise. Why destroy yourself? Do not be over wicked and do not be a fool. Why die before your time? It is good to grasp the one and not let go of the other. Whoever fears God will avoid all extremes. I think that is a great definition of ego. Why it's so important for Christians to have an ego. Because it's our ego that helps us avoid all extremes. We don't want to be given you know, our id the full reign, which I forget which side I was going. We don't want to give our id the full reign or our super ego the full reign. That's why we want to have a great, an ego present. And the best way to have a righteous ego is to train it in righteousness. Physical training is of some value. Spiritual training has value for this life and the life to come. Let's train our ego. In the conscious world, while we're awake, you know, controlling the id and the super ego. And in this way, we can be healthy, um, God-fearing, righteous Christians that serve others and make a difference in this world. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for two new videos each week. Tell me in the comments below about your career situation and I'll make a video for you with a shout out. You can also become a member at motivationeer.com. Your career is not just a way to make a living, it's a way to transform the world.